Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to the Mr. Clutch Sportscast. It is I, Mr. Clutch. And today, we are going to be talking about some more baseball. Uh, we're going to be breaking down two big-name free agents and where their potential landing spots are. Although these guys should have been signed like two months ago. Who's keeping track anymore? I mean, it took Bryce Harper until February to get signed by the Phillies. So, at this point, nothing would surprise me. Uh, let's start off with a general overview on these two big-name pitchers. First guy, Dallas Keuchel. 2017 World Series champion with the Houston Astros. Former Cy Young Award winner. Uh, that was back in 2015. 15, I think. Pretty sure it was 2015. Overall, a really good pitcher. I mean, yeah, just I don't know why these guys are not being signed. Because, like I said, they should have been signed January at the latest. And, by the way, Dallas Keuchel has been in the majors for seven years, I think I saw, on BaseballReference.com. This is where I'm pulling some of this information from. Second guy we're going to look at today, Craig Kimbrell. He's been with the Braves, he's been with the Padres for a season, and he's been with the Red Sox for the past three seasons, I believe. I think it was three seasons. Uh, and he was with the Braves for, must have been five or six. So, oh, by the way, Craig Kimbrell is a 2018 World Series champion with the Boston Red Sox. So, I mean, there's that. Uh, so let's get started with Dallas Keuchel, shall we? He's a left-handed pitcher. He is going into his age 31 season. So he will be 31 um, at some point during this season. I didn't look up his birthday. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> but, so he's on, he, he's past his prime, right? He's not going to, he's not going to put up 300 strikeout numbers and, you know, sub- two ERAs like he would if he was 25, but I believe that Dallas Keuchel still has some gas left in the tank, and with the recent development of Luis Severino being out until May, first part of May-ish, and also the developments on the Clayton Kershaw injury, that's a killer for me, personally. Uh, there's some new potential suitors for Mr. Keuchel. Uh, let's start first off with the Dodgers. Look, this is... Let me get my personal beef out of the way first. I know you guys are trying to stay under the luxury cap, or under the luxury tax cap, or whatever they call it, but pony up, put a one-year deal, 15 to 20 mil to Dallas Keuchel. See what he does. If he's good, you can sign him to a multi-year... I don't know, multi-year, 50-some-odd million dollar deal. But... Right now, Kirsch is down. And you just signed him to three years and $90 million. So, I don't, I just, yeah. All right, that's the personal beef. But, here's where the actual analysis will come in. Dodger Stadium is a pitcher-friendly ballpark. So, I think Dallas Keuchel would have a good time pitching at home there. 
Uh, the Dodgers are already, they're loaded, man. Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager's coming back uh, after his Tommy John surgery. He'll be back playing shortstop. Justin Turner, um, he's a 300, 330 hitter every year. Max Muncy, he had a breakout season last year with the Dodgers. I expect him to do the same. So good things offensively and defensively. Uh, and you have guys like Rich Hill, who's an established veteran in the rotation for the Dodgers. Walker Bueller, young stud who came up seemingly out of nowhere last year. He's the Dodgers' ace, apparent, after Clayton Kershaw takes a really hard decline. Uh, you have guys like Hinjin Ryu, a hidden gem for the Dodgers the past couple years. I mean, you throw Dallas Keuchel in there, that's... <laughs> That's a good rotation, man. That's that is a that is a lineup you are not gonna want to face. Um so that's the Dodgers side. Let's go to the Yankees. You have obviously Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Glaber Torres, Miguel Andujar, uh did I Gary Sanchez. I don't think I mentioned him. But if I did, Gary Sanchez. Um, plus, there's a whole crop of young guys there. Like I said, Torres and Andujar, but there's also Clint Frazier. He could be a he could be a find. Uh, they signed Troy Tulowitzki sort of out of desperation because of D.D. Gregorius, but that could still pan out to be something. There, they've got one of the best bullpens. In the majors, Dellen Batansis, Araldness Chapman. They've lost some guys too, but they're still they're still top notch. Um in their rotation they got CC Sabathia. Oh, who else they have? J. A. Happ. They re signed him, which was smart for the Yankees, I think. Ah, uh, they got James Paxton in the trade with the Mariners. Sorry, these things happened a while ago, so <laughs> a little bit rusty on those. But that's a good four-man rotation, too, plus whoever you want to plug into that fifth spot to replace Severino. So I think right now, in terms of actual needs, Dodgers and Yankees are top two, uh, top two teams. The Houston Astros could re-up with Dallas Keuchel too. If he if he's out on the market for so long, we saw this with Mike Moustakas back in the twenty uh, seventeen off season. He re-upped with Kansas City for a one year deal, low budget, and ultimately he got traded. So. It wasn't much loss for the Royals, but he was out on the market for a long time looking for a multi-year, big, big money deal, and he deserved it. I mean, when you look at the raw numbers, he, he deserved a big deal, but he didn't get it, came back with the Royals, ultimately got traded. I could conceivably see the same thing happening with Dallas Keuchel. Uh... They re-up with Keuchel on a one-year deal, give him $10, $12 And that could happen in the next several days. I don't know how desperate Keuchel is to pitch, um, but the Astros have a good team. Still, I mean, they have for the past four or five years, but and the Astros could always trade him. If he's having a not so great year, trade him to somebody, oh, I don't know, like the Dodgers or the Yankees. Oh, oh, these are all possibilities. So I would say right now, top three teams 
Dodgers, Yankees, Astros. Dodgers and Yankees are kind of... They're definitely top two, but they're not necessarily in that order. I don't know how desperate the two teams are. But the Astros, they're contending, but they're definitely dark horse candidates right now, I'd say. So those are my top three landing spots for Dallas Keuchel. Let's shift focus a little bit to Craig Kimbrell. Like I said, 2018 World Series champion with the Red Sox last year. Uh, he's been around for a little bit longer. Dallas Keuchel was in the majors, or has been in the majors, for the past seven seasons. Uh, Dallas Keuchel has been in the majors for ten, I believe. Nine or ten seasons. But still, arguably one of the best closers in the game. There are so many teams, I think, that could use a closer. I think the biggest thing is who are the contenders who need a closer. I mean, that narrows it down a little bit, but there's still a lot of teams. Right now, I'd say the Cubs are definitely up there with Brandon Morrow, the former Dodger pitcher who was just stellar during the 2017 uh, season. He's down with an injury, I believe. So having Keuchel there would bring stability to that bullpen, which can be... It can be volatile at times. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So Cubs are up there. There's talk of the Red Sox re-upping with Keuchel. But I think that, to me, seems to be a little bit more of a long shot. Um, simply because I think the Red Sox have a surprisingly loaded bullpen, despite losing Joe Kelly to the Dodgers. Which, by the way, good job, Dodgers. Good pickup. Um, but I think they still have a good, good core in that bullpen. So I feel like if they really wanted Kimbrel back, they would have just done it already. I don't know. That's, that's just me kind of thinking out loud there. Uh, there's also talk of the Braves potentially re-signing Kimbrel bringing him back home to his roots. That's more of a possibility. Um, as far as I know, the Braves don't really have that. They don't have an elite bullpen. As far as I know, it's okay. But they need a guy to push it over the top. Kimbrel would be that guy. He always has been. So, right now, one and two in terms of needs, one to two teams. Cubs, number one. Braves, number two. And the third team that I think could use Kimbrel. I'm breaking this down, and I'm thinking... You know, I'm going to give you two more teams for Craig Kimbrell, who I think could really use um, Kimbrell in the closer role. I'm going to say the Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals, and the Colorado Rockies. Now, I fully understand, I'm well aware, that the St. Louis Cardinals got Andrew Miller in free agency this year. I don't care. <laughs> I have watched Andrew Miller this spring training. He has not been great. Um, he was he definitely lost something last year. He was dominant during the 2017 2016 postseason. 
Um, he was not last year. He's, I don't, and who knows, he might get it back this season, but you never know. Baseball is a funny game. It can, it giveth and it taketh away. So I think, I think in terms of stability, the Cardinals could, could go out and get a Craig Kimbrell. Um, especially with the additions of, or with the addition rather of Paul Goldschmidt on offense, that's an envious team to play for. When you have a perennial Gold Glover, perennial Silver Slugger, uh, and a perennial 300 hitter who can hit 30 home runs and drive in 100 runs. I, I, if I were Craig Kimbrell, I would think about telling my agent to call St. Louis. That's me. Because they're, they've become really desirable to play for. Now, the reason I say the Rockies is they just lost a reliever. Uh, Adam Adavo, Adavino? Adavino? I don't know. I think it's Adavino. Adam Adavino uh, to the Yankees. I believe that was a free agent deal. So, here's the thing though. Colorado is not a pitcher-friendly ballpark. And it's not because the distance from the plate to the fence is, you know, super short or anything. I think, I think from the plate to center field is about 420, which is, that's pretty deep. That's pretty deep for a ballpark. Um, but it's not a pitcher-friendly ballpark because of the altitude, the air. So, I still think the Rockies could use Kimbrel, because Wade Davis has kind of lost something from uh, his days as a Royal. And I think Kimbrel is still solid enough. He's also going to be 31 this season, but I think I think he's still got enough left in the tank as well to, you know, at the very least, bring some stability to the bullpen and give the Rockies options if they want to compete with the Dodgers. Which, you know, like I said, they picked up Joe Kelly. They have Kenley Jansen. Um, they've got a top-notch bullpen too. So you want, to ask, you want to keep up with them Joneses or Dodgers, then... The Rockies should call Craig Kimbrell. As a fan of the Dodgers, I don't want them to do this. But, objectively speaking, I would do that. So, I would say clear number one uh, for the Kimbrell sweepstakes is Cubs. Number two, Braves. Three... Dark Horse, St. Louis Cardinals, four, really dark horse, Colorado Rockies. So there you go. Those are my potential landing spot breakdowns for Dallas Keuchel and Craig Kimbrell. I will be sure to bring you guys the updates if they get signed in the next few days. Um, we'll break down those deals. But... For now, I will sign off, leaving you, wishing you nothing but the best on this Monday night. Um, yeah, this ending is awkward as crap. So I'm just going to sign off now. This is Mr. Clutch signing off, saying as always, stay clutch, people.